Hi, my name is Flossie. I'm hot and sweaty. I've been outside foraging. And this is my 1999 Ford E350 step van, my tiny home on wheels. Oh, that is so deep, deep and creepy. I think sometimes we don't talk about mental health enough. My world and my bubble sometimes feel very large and consuming, and yet I am only a small dot on the planet. I have had a lovely afternoon, got some video editing done in a nice quiet spot, <sighs> parked in the forest where there is no signal, I'm undisturbed and I had a dip in the ocean as well. Have I lived enough? Have I loved enough? Have I considered right action enough? Have I come to any conclusion? Have I experienced happiness with sufficient gratitude? Have I endured loneliness with grace? I say this, or perhaps I'm just thinking it. Actually, I probably think too much. When I step out into the garden, where the gardener, who is said to be a simple man, is tending his children. The roses. <sighs> Feels so good. Day, and I'm sure this video is going to be a collection of lots of different bits and pieces from lots of different locations as I am filming less cohesively because I am starting a new job and that is taking up a lot of my time and focus. Today I am looking for uh, Douglas fir cones. There is a recipe which I'm going to share with my Patreons which you can use them to make a uh, sugar syrup or cough syrup. Um, which is very good for one um, and has been around for a long time and can be done with a lot of different pine cones um, but they are green right now which is the perfect time and I am going to fetch a ladder and try and harvest as many as I can lay my hands on <sighs> and it is very very warm and so I will have my rosy glow on and we shall get to it here is what we're doing these are really gorgeous. They're green, soft. You can tell because they've got those little mouse tails on them. Anyway, I'm hoping to fill this basket with cones, stay hydrated, and get outside. Let's do it. Foraging in the woods of my childhood. The trees are my memories. The grass, my hope. The flowers, oh the flowers, that hide among the ferns, a reflection of the joy of the precious mushrooms and pine cones, fed by the rot of all of the hurt, the fleshy morsels, an homage to the scar tissue, the sun is tilted, and streams through the oaks, feathering at my feet. Beaming forward, the sweet beckoning of the path I walked, I no longer one I have to forge, at least here, all the years of effort, foraging in the woods of my childhood. And very, very sticky fingers. 
because they're all covered in sappy oils, which is the tasty bits. All right. sweaty I've been outside foraging this time for pine cones these we are making a traditional Italian cough syrup called Magolio or pine cone syrup I'm gonna show you a little bit through the process I am excited this is the first time I have ever made it and I am enjoying the process my fingers and hands are sticky the van smells beautifully like pine sap and I'm excited to, in a few weeks, have some syrup ready to go. Look at all that. It's not a whole ton, but they're quite high up. So that's all I could reach. And you know what? I'm making a small batch to start off to see how it tastes. This is just plenty for me. Here's a good look at it. Aren't they cool? But in today's video, I just wanted to show you this. Look at them all. So, I'm gonna fill these jars with as many pine cones as we can make fit. And then fill the jars with sugar and let the sugar draw out all of the liquid from inside these cones. Twitchy ones to fit in the last little spaces. Oh man, this big gap over here. There we go. Three to keep my house smelling lovely. All right, there we go. Now to fill the jars with sugar. Right. Wish me luck as I can try and fill these jars very carefully. I want the sugar to get and fill in as many of the gaps as possible. sugar before I picked it. No, I think I'm doing it. I'm doing it the right way. I guess with trial and error, you can do it different ways. How to spill the least amount of sugar possible. It's a messy process. Hello everybody. <sighs> I think sometimes we don't talk about mental health enough. In a world where things around us feel overwhelming and out of our control, or there are people in, in places of power who are doing things that are heartbreaking and that we might disagree with, keeping ourselves able to function, able to live and be in this space 
to meet our own daily needs, to be in community, to give and interact with other people is a life and death piece. Thing, our mental health becomes the thing that keeps us sane, to keeps us focusing on what works and tends us, what we can do to maintain and grow our community and learn more about life or find things that bring us joy. And for me, bringing you joy, bringing myself joy is an important practice to especially in winter, take care of the seasonal depression that happens. We're in summer right now in the Northern Hemisphere and it is winter, the depths of winter in the Southern Hemisphere where I'm originally from. So I am very used to August being dark and dreary and rainy and overcast all the time. And so being in the ocean has been one of my primary self-care modalities things that I can reconnect with myself, reconnect with the things that are priority to me, reconnect with why I live the way I do or the people, why I have the people in my life, in my life and the things that I am attracted and drawn to and the reasons why I forage, the reasons why I swim, the reasons why I live a different kind of life outside of the city and I think I like to share all of those perspectives with you and having the opportunity to be by the ocean to sit and work in an afternoon feeling the sea breeze on a hot summer's day waft through the doors is one of the most amazing feelings and then in the evening after i finish work walk out the door leave my van behind and walk into the ocean go for a swim it feeds my soul it can be this thing that I feel incredibly grateful to have the privilege and access to that I have curated a life that puts me in a place where I am next to the things that meet my own needs. And I think the first step to that is getting clear on what your needs are. Do you need quiet? Do you need solitude? Do you need community? Are you an extrovert? Do you need people around you? Finding out the things that feed you, finding out the things that feed you, finding out the things that light you up that keep you able to survive and thrive, to bring you joy. For me, going for a dive, feeling the ocean close above my head, holding my breath, being really in the sensations of my body, hearing only the water or the far off boats in the distance and the noise as I submerge, seeing crabs and sea stars and kelp and underwater seaweeds the mating rituals the reproduction rituals especially squid eggs they're amazing they're beautiful and seeing the forms of life and the fish reminds me that my world and my bubble sometimes feel very large and consuming and yet i am only a small dot on the planet and I am only small in consideration of everybody out there. And then visiting this new underwater world puts some of that in perspective of my impact on the world and the things that I can do to impact others or impact the planet and how much of a responsibility. And the key thing for me is if I understand an ecosystem, I can better contribute and support it. And so I have been working a lot, as you can tell, to get in and associated with the water, fresh water in this video and salt water, so that I understand what is an abundance and what is needing of protection. Uh, if I can find out from other people and learn what goes on, I think it is incredible. And I hope that me sharing a little of this experience helps put some of this into a space that feels good. Yeah. Find your own ocean that you want to swim in that brings you joy.
Life is a river, ongoing, till it can't flow no more. For it is always struggling, through twists and turns, trying to find a way. It's a creek, trying to survive, to stay strong on its own, even when it's low on water. It continues, never giving up. Life is a pond so small, only goes for so long. For soon it'll fall ill and dry out, forever gone, only leaving behind soil for a new life to begin. Life is the river that flows only for so long, till its end where it lets go into a lake. For the universe calls you above to where all the spirits belong. peacefully and happy, a place where we can all eventually reach, for no river can run forever. They all eventually lead to the sea. Life is like a river with all its twists and turns. Just when you think the sailing is smooth, a storm sets your life in turmoil. Whether a flood of turbulent trouble or a drought of boredom and unrest, our lives seem to flow with an unknown current. We are sure we know the course we are on, but in the blink of an eye, we no longer know where we are. It seems the way has been flooded. We are no longer secure in the path that we have chosen. So it really, truly takes courage and manifestation and belief that you can do it to find a new way to trust ourselves and know we are right. Oh, those fishies there. Little tiny fishies.
in the countryside. Fruits you could forage, so many berries go into your porridge. Trees in the hedgerows with fruit to fill bellies, green crunchy fruits for those crab apple jellies. Lots of wild mushrooms your baskets could fill, but don't mix with toadstools, cause they will make you ill. Well, it's almost 8 p.m. now, getting quite late in the evening, and I think it is time for me to make dinner, get organized, settle in for the night, and rest. Because I've had a big day, it's been a long work day, and then a swim for an hour or two, actually for an hour about. <sighs> I went to the supermarket earlier, so I have a not li nice load of new groceries, and I will see you somewhere else next time I'm out adventuring. Thank you so much for coming with me for this little dive adventure. It was so nice, and I do really love getting out and about, and oh, my ears are full of water. Oh, it's pretty out there. <sighs> Thank you for watching so much. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button and ding the notification bell because you just never know when it's not gonna show you my videos. But if you check your subscription tab or you get notifications, then you'll always see my videos that come out every week. We're doing something new and crazy. And I appreciate all of your comments, your kind words, your support as always. Thank you so much and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.